miracle of South Africa's birth as a true democracy is one of the greatest stories of our time. It is a story of struggle and sacrifice, of great risks and ultimately great reward. This struggle was fought on many fronts and many people played their part. In the end, it required all these contributions to come together in a perfect storm of outrage, courage, and hope to deliver the freedom we all enjoy today. And while much has been written about the liberation movements that spearheaded this struggle, extraordinary stories of leaders such as Nelson Mandela, Robert Sobuko, and Steve Biko, there is another part of this history that remains largely untold. It is the story of what was a long and often lonely battle against apartheid, right where the National Party wielded their power. The South African Parliament. It is a story of commitment to the cause, of showing the world what was really happening behind the walls of censorship, that the government's propaganda was a lie. It is a story of detention, harassment, intimidation and imprisonment. A story that some have tried to change and even erase entirely from history. This is the story of the Democratic Alliance. To trace the history of the Democratic Alliance, we need to turn back the clock more than a half a century. It is the year 1959. The National Party has been in government for just over a decade. Its policy of apartheid is systematically denying the black majority their rights on a scale never seen before. Organizations such as the ANC and the newly formed PAC are driven underground and later declared unlawful through oppressive apartheid laws. It is the darkest chapter in our country's history. The United Party's unwillingness to confront apartheid head-on as the opposition party causes the breakaway group of 13 MPs to form the Progressive Party with a mandate to oppose apartheid. For the next 35 years, the Progressive Party will wage campaigns against the most evil apartheid laws tabled before Parliament. In the general election of 1961, the Progressive Party won its first seat in Parliament when Helen Suzman was elected to the National Assembly. This was a time of fear and censorship. Speaking out against the government was not tolerated and came with harsh penalties. But Helen's relentless exposure of the National Party's apartheid laws reached the outside world. For 13 years, she would be the party's only representative in parliament. During this time, her principles never wavered and she never lost courage. In parliament, she single-handedly did the work of an entire opposition party, making countless speeches and asking hundreds of questions on housing, education, forced removals, past law offenses, detentions, burnings, whippings, police brutality and executions. When a cabinet minister accused Helen of asking questions just to embarrass South Africa overseas, she famously replied, It's not my questions that embarrass South Africa, it's your answers. Helen was a champion of the rights of workers. She demanded trade union rights for all and fought for better wages and working conditions. She also visited prisons and obtained better conditions for prisoners. Nelson Mandela would later write this about her first visit to Robben Island. It was an odd and wonderful sight to see this courageous woman peering into our cells and strolling around our courtyard. She was the first and only woman to grace our cells. 
In 1963, ANC President General Albert Lutuli wrote her a letter expressing his admiration and appreciation for her role in the struggle, referring to her as a bright star in a dark chamber where lights of liberty are going out one by one. Such was her contribution to the struggle that President Mandela asked her personally to accompany him when he signed the Constitution into law in 1996. He went on to say this about her. Your courage, integrity, and principled commitment to justice have marked you as one of the outstanding figures in the history of public life in South Africa. 37 years after Helen Sussman helped launch South Africa's first progressive non-racial party, she sat alongside Nelson Mandela and witnessed the signing of a document that contained so much of her own values and beliefs. This gesture was a demonstration of the true respect that one great South African held for another. In September 1977, a young newspaper reporter working for the Rand Daily Mail traveled to Port Elizabeth in the days following Steve Biko's death. She and her editor didn't believe the government's claim that Biko had died from a hunger strike. The reporter's name was Helen Ziller. Her investigation exposed the truth behind his brutal murder at the hands of the police. She was charged and found guilty by the apartheid press council for her reporting on the Biko story. It was quite routine to get phone calls with death threats and various other things, and now and again I would have to move out of my little flat on the outskirts of Hilbra. Responding as a freelance journalist to reports that police were burning shacks at KTC on the Cape Flats, she rushed to the scene and was arrested for being in a group area without a permit. For the states of emergency in the mid to late 1980s, our house was used as a safe house. For months, she hid various ANC activists from the security police. The stakes were high, there's no question about that. And at times during that period, I really did get terrified. Fearing arrest, she eventually went into hiding with a two-year-old son. She is a, a strong fighter, uh, somebody who stands for the truth, somebody who stands for principle, and has a courage, courage and convictions and determination, sometimes steely, uh, to make sure that this country makes progress. Her work in exposing apartheid, first as a reporter and later with Black Sesh, the UDF and the End Conscription Campaign has confirmed a place in history as a defender of freedom and champion of democracy. The Democratic Alliance of today is the convergence of people from various political traditions brought together by shared values of non-racialism, openness and opportunities for every South African. Some have their roots in the ANC, in Kondowe Sizwe, the Black Consciousness Movement, the PAC, and the UDF. Others were trade unionists. Many were detained, harassed, or even imprisoned for the part they played in the struggle. They have joined the Democratic Alliance because they want to build a non-racial party that can truly deliver a better life for all. The DA is growing so fast today. 
because many, many people from a whole variety of different political backgrounds understand that the one big idea that is central to every successful democracy is the DA's idea of the Open Opportunity Society for All. The Democratic Alliance has its roots in the struggle against apartheid. By bringing together people from different chapters of the struggle around shared values, it has become the most diverse and dynamic political party in South Africa. I am DA because the DA is a party for all the people of South Africa. It is a home where everybody is welcome. I am DA because, because the DA offers a future for everyone. And I just like the fact that the DA cares so much about people, cares so much about poverty, cares so much about delivery that's not coming. And it's opened up the doors to say we're a party of young, black, white, Indian, colored, Muslim, Hindu, atheist, straight, gay, all of that. Who believes that the government works for the people, not that the people work for the government. True freedom, opportunities, growth and development. And above all, the rule of law, the equality before the law. Making it possible for every South African, everyone, individually, to have an opportunity to make a life. That creates an opportunity for all its people. It is a home where we all share the same values, the same principles, and we are inviting fellow South Africans who feel the same to join our DA. The Democratic Alliance is also the fastest growing party in South Africa. Its share of the national vote has grown from a mere 1.7% in 1994 to almost 25% in the 2011 local government election. Winning its first metro in 2000, followed by its first province in 2009, the Democratic Alliance truly evolved from an opposition party to a party of government in 28 municipalities across South Africa. The 2014 national election will see this growth continue as it challenges for more provinces and ultimately becomes a party of national government. Honoring its past, the Democratic Alliance continues to work to make South Africa a better place for all.